Hi everyone, Sarah Vaccaro, hypnotherapist and rapid transformational therapist. Today's topic is a very, very passionate one of mine. Uh, my former background was education and teaching. I have a child of my own with a narcissist. And so this has become a very, very uh, fun subject for me to explore and create uh, information and resources around. So today's topic is all about how to co-parent what or how to help your child when the co-parent it's actually counter parent is a narcissist so children who have a narcissistic parent or a very very toxic parent a parent with narcissistic traits almost always suffer from anxiety in relation to contact with that parent they're constantly left in confusion wondering uh where that parent is because chances are they are very inconsistent with their schedule and are not effective at all at meeting that child's emotional needs so your child is left with the ramifications of emotional neglect i have other videos on that feel free to check those out but the narcissistic parent is only ever able to think about how they feel so without realizing it they neglect to consider what that child might be feeling and oftentimes even worse shames the child for how they feel. So for example, say a young child is tired and they just, they don't want to talk. Yet when they express this and they're kind of down and mopey and just maybe quiet, the narcissistic parent will get angry and attempt to inflict guilt on this child for the way that they're behaving. They'll say things like, well, why don't you want to talk to me? Really? After all that I do for you? And good kids always want to talk to their mom good kids always want to talk to that dad you know you're not being you're not being a good boy you're not being a good girl uh i'm i you know i'm gonna think twice about that birthday present and and they inflict a guilt and shame on this child all because they're tired as opposed as opposed to like a healthy response which sounds like you know i get it you're tired you've had a long day uh me too is there anything that i can help you with you know get some rest honey i i love you right? And holding space for that child to feel what they're feeling and not making them wrong for expressing what they're feeling. So when a child is shamed for how they feel, anxiety is induced, guilt is induced, even more internal shame and, and thinking something's wrong with me is induced. The experience of continual guilt and shame about oneself will always dismantle a child's sense of their self, their sense of identity, their core, who they are, they feel like something is wrong or broken within them. If the child is constantly made to feel anxious every time they're having any kind of feeling or opinion that isn't congruent with how the narcissistic parent feels, then the narcissistic parent will inflict guilt and shame on that child in order to manipulate that child into thinking as he or she does. So it's that gaslighting, that constant control, the manipulation. So in essence, the child of a narcissistic parent is very rarely allowed to have a feeling, a thought, or an opinion of on their own if it differs from the narcissistic parent without being emotionally punished. I imagine you know what this experience is like because you were once with that person who you now have a child with and if they did the same thing to you. Their children are no different. They don't see them as, as little beings that they need to love and nurture and develop so that they can become healthy adults themselves one day. They use them the same way that they used you while you were in the relationship with them. It's unfortunate now because this child is more helpless and defenseless than you are. I mean, you having been with them, you could leave the relationship and go get a job and, and do all these other things on your own. The child can't do those things. So it is so important to provide that child with help or else they're going to feel cheated out of a peaceful and secure childhood. So it's up to the non-narcissistic, the non-toxic parent to be this safe space for that child because prolonged feelings of shame, guilt, anxiety, all they do is they sabotage a child's mental health. Uh, if you haven't done any research on childhood emotional neglect, chances are, if you're watching this video and you're in this situation, 
like I am or was, I have a child with a narcissist, uh, you experience childhood emotional neglect yourself. It's what led to that kind of dot, dot to dot kind of road to leading you to being in this situation, having a child of your own with a person with these tendencies or traits. So how can a parent, a non-narcissistic, uh, non-toxic parent, assist the child without talking negatively about the narcissistic parent because you don't want to do that after all at the end of the day it is their parent just like you are their parent as well so you want to avoid talking negatively about the narcissistic parent which may feel extremely difficult because inside you may still have unhealed wounds yourself that you're carrying that get triggered by that narcissist well one way to lend a hand without throwing that counter parent or the co-parent under the bus is to just stick with the process, not the content, just stick with the process. So keeping things very business-like, very transactional, very general, and maintaining this, maintaining this focus on this overarching goal of my goal is to raise a healthy child. My goal is to educate my child on healthy versus unhealthy relationship dynamics. So that is critical to stay focused on. And oftentimes, because you're carrying around your own inner unhealed wounds and those triggers uh, feel like there's open wounds that salt gets poured in when that narcissistic parent does something and they know that that gets under your skin. They do it intentionally and they do it on purpose. And all the while your child is witnessing this dynamic. So keep your eye on the prize. The prize is to raise a healthy child and have your child understand the difference between a healthy relationship and an unhealthy relationship. Chances are that's why you got out of that relationship with that narcissistic parent in the first place. So take a moment, right? To remind the child that how they feel is of utmost importance. Recognizing, understanding, verbalizing feelings, especially negative feelings in a safe way, of course, signifies healthy emotional regulation. So when a child can identify that they feel mad, that they feel sad, that they feel disappointed or hurt or frustrated or angry, then they usually won't act it out inappropriately. It's in the not understanding their feelings that they act it out inappropriately. So when you as the healthier parent can help them identify their feelings, you can help them get those feelings out in a much more appropriate and healthy way. So in addition, by identifying being in a, a difficult state or a difficult feeling, you can help them and elicit support, whatever the support is needed. I have an amazing 86 page e-resource guide that helps with this. Uh, so just visit the link in the description below um, to go to the website and you can download that. It is absolutely amazing. But this is critical. This is critical for the child's continued mental health and well being. So letting the child know that if a person in his or her life dismisses them, shames them, puts them down, makes them feel small or little for how they feel, then the person is relating to them in a very unhealthy manner, whether it's a parent or not. So it's important to clarify to the child that even though another person may honor and respect how they feel, it does not mean that the child will automatically get their way. As a child learns to manipulate, they learn to play the game. Uh, they do this because the, not, the narcissistic toxic parent is manipulating playing games with them and they pick up on this at very young age, very easily and very quickly. So uh, this person, narcissistic parent may say, oh, you're mad, I get it, you know, uh, whatever, you know, get over it, suck it up. And when you notice that your child is mad, as a non-narcissistic parent, as a more healthy parent, you may say things like, you know, honey, you've got every right to be mad and I understand and I can see that you feel mad, but it's not okay to hit when you're mad or, you know, not okay to hit or bite. 
uh, your brother or sister or whatever. You can, however, you may, however, go to your room and you can hit or punch your pillows or your bed, something that allows you to express that feeling, that angry, mad feeling in a healthy way. Or, you know, I understand you're, you're frustrated. We're going to the store. I get it. Um, you're hungry. Uh, I'll get you a snack at the store and I promise you we'll eat afterwards. So when you set them up and you identify and recognize and acknowledge their feeling and then instead of expectation, a healthy expectation. Otherwise they're expressing this, this negative feeling because they don't know when this unmet need is going to be met. So the feeling is honored, but expectations are maintained. And the narcissistic toxic parent is not going to interact and engage with the child in this way. So it is imperative that you as a healthy child parent does. So alternatively, when you're confronting or talking to the toxic or narcissistic counterparent or co-parent about the content of their interaction with the child, you're most likely going to find this very unproductive. They are going to see nothing wrong with the way they parent at all. So for example, when you say things like, you know, why are you using birthday gifts as a leverage with our child? They're going to deflate accountability and responsibility like they always do and project the blame onto the parent who's confronting them. They're going to come after you. That's what's called narcissistic rage. And the narcissist has several extreme cognitive distortions that alter their reality for them in order to make it more palatable for their ego. That's what they're always doing. They're protecting that inner fragile ego. So you'll notice that they always play the victim. Well, you're the one that, da, 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 uh, you're the one that didn't get them what they wanted for their birthday. So someone's got to do it, right? And you're going to receive comments like that. So playing the victim is so common. Instead of examining their actions, uh, you know, assume, you know that they're going to assume the role of victim. So in this dynamic, helping the child identify unhealthy relational dynamics that he or she may be more able to understand what's happening to them with the narcissistic parent without you calling them out. So when they realize the shame and the guilt is this product of manipulation, it is easier for that child to let go. But giving the child permission to politely stick up for themselves, establish healthy boundaries, and respectfully end inappropriate interaction is essential. So some examples of this are the, you can teach the child to say, my feelings are important. My, they matter. My feelings matter. And, and then just to walk away. The conversation doesn't feel right. I don't feel like talking about this. I want to take a break. And then allow the child to, to walk away or at least teach them, I'm going to go to my room or, you know, I'm not ready to do what you want me to do. Uh, so please don't force me. You know, you want to teach your children to be kind and, and compassionate in this too, uh, but also have respect for themselves or to say, you know, this doesn't feel okay. I don't want to do this right now. So focus on the process of helping your child express themselves in a healthy way, not the content. I mean, you do, and when I, what I mean when I say that is you don't want to have them engage in this bully-like mentality or behavior with that narcissistic parent, but you do want to teach them to focus on the process of how to stand up for yourself, how to set healthy boundaries and how to say no in an appropriate way while being respectful. At the end of the day, it is the parent and this co-parent, counter-parent is not the only toxic person they're ever going to come into contact with. So these skills are able to be applied throughout their life. So giving the child permission, you teaching them and modeling them for permission to apply this knowledge to all of their relationships in life is key, is paramount. And granting the child permission as well to do it with you to respectfully stick up for themselves when any kind of unhealthy interaction is, is occurring is critical, is crucial for your child's mental and emotional health and well-being. So an empowered child, remember this, is able to help themselves or uh, him or herself in all kinds of situations, especially when the healthy, healthier parent is not there. You're not always going to be there. This applies to schools and teachers and coaches and, and, you know, bosses in the future. So it's important to note that if the narcissistic parent does become verbally or physically unsafe, when your child starts to say these things to them and employ boundaries that 
immediate action must be taken. Uh, name calling and physical violence need to be documented and reported uh, and, and make sure to practice safe relationship practices. So it is important for you to not just say this, but to model it and demonstrate it as well. You with that child and then you with other relationships that you are in because they're sponges. They're gonna be seeing this all the time. They're going to be watching how you interact and engage with that toxic person with their, with their narcissistic parent, the other half. And so it's important for you to take this on, apply it and practice it as well. So the e-resource guide that I have is, is absolutely amazing. It's best for kids ages three to 12 and it has phenomenal, phenomenal books. Uh, for looking at the top of my head, <laughs> much like this one by Dr. Wayne Dyer, I am, and, and so many others that most of them are read uh, as read alouds on YouTube. So you simply click on the link and then gives you exercises to engage in conversations, to open up dialogue about establishing these healthy boundaries. Uh, and then again, practicing this together. Practice is what is key to this. It's not just a one and done thing. The mind learns by repetition. So you are learning these skills as well as teaching them to your child and how to implement them in their world, in the real world as well. Thank you guys so much for, for tuning in. Remember that there are links in the description below this video for additional support.